A lot of people, both online and in my own personal life, have told me that Singapore Airlines is the best airline in the world. I get told that they have the most amazing service and some of the nicest planes in the sky. Now, in my over 25 years on this earth, that's a bit scary to think about, I have yet to step foot on a Singapore Airlines plane. Today, that is going to change. In this video, we're going to be checking out Singapore Airlines on a flight from Singapore to Colombo in Sri Lanka in business class on their 787 Dreamliner. Let's go and see if they live up to all of the hype. Flying Singapore Airlines today. This is the first time I've ever flown Singapore Airlines. Kind of excited because apparently it's ridiculously good. So I'm in T4, I need to get to T2. I just smashed my phone screen. I don't know if you can see that. Well, I have a screen protector on, so I think I just smashed the screen protector. But it's the first time I've ever done that. Isn't that something you only do when you're like a dumb teenager? What is wrong with me? Um, all right, where's the business class check-in queue? Colombo, Singapore Airlines, row six. Okay, they don't have. <laughs> Check in? You have to do it this way. Uh, scan passport. Select destination. Colombo, Sri Lanka. Right, this is like the weakest piece of paper I've ever seen. I hate this carpet. Ah, Singapore Airlines. Okay, this is gonna sound absolutely absurd. I kind of prefer it when someone checks me in. I probably could have just come over here. I'm gonna ask. Hi, do you have the like thicker boarding passes? Is it? Is it possible? Yeah. Can I get it reprinted onto it? <laughs> you want to reprint any luggage for chicken? No, I've just done it. I've just done it on the page. Thank you for that. Yeah. All right, that worked out. I got my thicker boarding pass. Singapore Airlines lounge. What do they have here? Is there multiple or is it just one lounge? All right, the lounge is just here. Let's go. Hey, yo. What is this lift? Right, is something going to jump out? What? This is from like a horror movie. I just want to get to a lounge, man. I need some caffeine. I got another like eight hours to stay awake. We go this way? Hi. Hello. Sorry, I'm flying business class today. Is this yes. the lounge or is it another lounge? Next door. Okay. What's this lounge for? This one is for economy class who holds a gold card. Ah, if you gold. Okay, gotcha. All right, thank you. Why does that lounge exist? With bloody carpet. Okay. This is... Is this it? Uh, okay, this lounge sucks. I don't think Airlines is supposed to be good. So what was up with that? I wasn't very well versed with the whole Singapore Airlines lounge situation, but I've since learnt, so let me explain it quickly. In Singapore, Singapore Airlines has six lounges across Terminal 2 and Terminal 3. There's two Silver Chris lounges, two Chris Fly Gold lounges, a first class lounge and the private room. Now, I won't really touch on the first class lounge and the private room, these are both first class, but what is going on with the naming scheme here? Let's start with the Chris Fly Gold lounge. Despite having probably the fancier of the titles, this is for passengers traveling in economy or premium economy, but have Star Alliance Gold membership. These are the most basic of the lounges. They have simpler food, less expensive wine, etc., etc. Silver Chris lounges, which is such a weak name, really, in my opinion, are for passengers traveling in business class. These are basically your typical business class lounges. They got buffets, bars, nice wine, showers, etc., etc. They're a good step above the Chris Flyer Gold lounges. Now, to add to this, I was in T2. The lounges in T2 kind of suck. They're small, kind of old, don't have much natural light. They're just not very impressive lounges. All of the flagship, really nice Singapore Airlines lounges are in T3, so that's where we're heading. I'm gonna catch a sky train. I just have to be really careful here to make it back in time for my flight. I guess I just have to check out the nicest lounge. Cause I've never flown Singapore before, right? So I guess I have to check out the nicest lounge here. Cause that other one was terrible. Oh. So do you obey your flight at Terminal 2? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank so uh, it probably takes 20 minutes, 25? Yeah, right. Okay, Thanks. all right. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, so definitely head here if you're flying Singapore Airlines. The T3 lounges are significantly nicer than the T2 ones. They are absolutely humongous. The buffets have a huge selection of food. There was a big bar in the middle that was sort of that was sort of going off. It was really, really busy, but there is a bunch of seating. So you should still be able to get a seat somewhere. This is a much nicer, more modern lounge, much more like what I was expecting to see from Singapore Airlines. Okay, that lounge was significantly better than the other one. <laughs> But I only had 50, 20 minutes there. 
now I've got to get back over to T. What are we in? I can't even think right. Boarding starts in 14 minutes. I think we're jogging again. That was a seriously nice lounge. It was very busy. The drinks, I think, there were, they had like a bar and like a bartender and it was like, yeah. I think that's the place to come to get drunk. But I didn't have the time. <laughs> I think we've now done every terminal of Singapore. They're all quite nice, but the, the carpet, no, I can't get behind it. Okay, so apparently boarding started. <laughs> it's up to a 16 minute walk. Up to a 16 minute walk. F56. Yeah, that's a long way away. <laughs> Singapore to San Francisco has got to be like 15 hours, right? That's a long one. <laughs> Addison, stay hydrated. Hi. <laughs> As you can see here, I was pretty much the last person to get on the plane. And you also see here where I accidentally unplugged the microphone. Whoops. Very interesting. I was Bellinis. Quite nice. <laughs> this, yeah. My pre-departure pre drink is a Bellini peach Prosecco. So yeah, initial impressions are the seats are maybe a little bit squished together. There's not a whole lot of storage, but the crew are magnificent. Maybe not magnificent. The crew are just delightful. That's a good word for it. This might be geographically obvious, but it's reminding me of Malaysia Airlines. I mean, I don't like to deli in drama, but there is a European man losing his absolute mind in the uh, the galley just behind me. He was also at the gate, but I don't even know what his problem was. I think he's just mad about his seat or something, about paying lots of money and having some sort of status or something. The thing that gets me is it's a, it's a three and a half hour flight. Like, I'll happily sit in economy for three and a half hours. I might get a little mad if, you know, I expected it up. Well, even then, you don't expect an upgrade. You're just grateful when it happens. But anyway, I don't know the full story. I'll stop judging the guy, but it's just a, it's a bit random to be listening to that, especially because the crew are so lovely. Like, they really do have that sort of Malaysian, Singaporean joy about them. Anyway, I guess we're just waiting for takeoff. Seat's okay. I'm not 100% I'm not sold on the seat. Uh, the Cathay flighter just came off A350. I'd say that's probably a bit better. Um, the screen, in-flight in entertainment looks really, really nice, actually. And the crew seem... Really, really, just like joyful. I don't know. Like the Cathay crew were really, really nice. Really, really professional. Really, really like on it. But there's something about like the Singaporean smile or something. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Always I don't really know how to explain this, but Singapore Airlines had the most strict safety checks I've ever had on a plane ever. And their safety video is incredibly thorough. But yeah, they had, that's the first time I've ever seen like sign language in a safety video. Obviously that's... That's pretty good. How do the other airlines do it? And then also, shoes on. Shoes stay on during takeoff. <laughs> the oxygen masks don't have bags. Is that a Boeing cost-cutting measure? <laughs> I know it's not relevant yet because we haven't actually, we're not allowed to recline or anything yet, but I don't know how you make the seat move. I can't find the seat controls anywhere. Yeah, we'll investigate this a bit more once we've uh, taken off. Alright, I feel dumb. I feel dumb about the whole seat thing, not knowing where the seat controls are. You ready? Are you ready? They just light up. They're right there. Okay, so we're definitely turning this into a segment. What's the watts of the USB charger? Dun 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 dun, what's the what's? Let's see. Okay, so we've got seven and a half watts. Uh, not bad, not amazing either. Not fast charging, but it will actually charge your phone. It's not like uh, the last ones. Cathay, yeah, the Cathay flight, and it was 2.5 watts, which is like completely useless. 7.5 watts, you'll actually sort of get a decent charge. I think 10 watts should be about the bellwether of like what's decent. We just took off. I just discovered how to move the seat. Things are. Things are good.
We started this whole video with this question of does Singapore Airlines deserve the sort of reputation that they have? Are they one of the world's best airlines? Are they the world's best airline? The crux of the matter, the meat and potatoes here really of what makes an airline great is the in-flight experience. So how does Singapore Airlines do? I found there's two points here that Singapore Airlines do truly excel at and they might be the best in the world at. And then there's sort of the big weak point here. Let's start with the good and work our way to the bad. Is there anything I can help you with? Press the call. Oh, sorry. The first strong point for Singapore Airlines was the service and the food. I'm kind of going to bundle them together here. Both are world class. That being said, the first dish was a little weird. Got some garlic bread. Garlic bread is better than normal bread. Big thumbs up. I've got this like prawn salad with egg and potato. I'm not a huge fan of a hard boiled egg, but I'll give it a shot. I also got a midsummer breeze, which is this drink, which is a mocktail. It's like a mix of like orange, pineapple and apple juice, I think, with some Sprite. It's nice. It's a bit, probably a bit too strong on the apple. Juice is mixed with Sprite. What can you expect, really? Bit of fizz, but not like too much fizz. I'm finding the salad just kind of weird, like a weird combination of things. Individually, they're all right, but together they just don't really fit. I don't know. I do like quite like the prawns, but again, Nothing's really fitting together for me. The starter definitely wasn't bad, it was just weird. Anyway, the main course really was, you know, the main event. It's the pièce de résistance. My French is terrible. Or should I say, pardon my French. <laughs> God, somebody stop him. Singapore Airlines has this service for passengers traveling in first class, business class, or premium economy called Book the Cook. I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory in the name, but essentially you can pre-book your meals. It depends a little bit on the city that you're flying out of, but if you're flying out of Singapore, there's a humongous variety of different options. Now, this isn't always a good thing. This initially reminded me of Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares. Available at any point in time, we have a half pound Angus Prime Burger. I had actually 20 more. Are you serious? But then look, after eating the meal and just thinking about it for half a second, I realized that uh, these meals are being produced in a commercial kitchen. This is completely different. There are hundreds of people working in this in these commercial kitchens. I could think they can produce the 40 different options to a really high standard. And look, they did. So let's get into that. One of the famous meals for Singapore Airlines is the lobster Thermidor, I think. Anyway, it's lobster. Uh, here it is. Let's dive on in and um, try the, uh, what is it? Like the, the bin chicken of the sea. What was the deal? Like, no one ate lobster 50 years ago because it was seen as, like, trash. Uh, but now it's, like, fancy. I don't know. Anyway, I, I like lobster. It's like mo lobster meat mixed in with uh, mushrooms. And then we've also got, like, a roast potato, some broccolini, some spinach, I think, and some carrot. It's all looking pretty good. Okay, so the vegetables are obviously just vegetables. I kind of like the potato. Something about the flavor of it. It's just cooked really well. But the actual lobster is bussin. bussin. <laughs> Lumps of lobster meat in this like cheesy sauce with chunks of mushroom. Now it wasn't a humongous serving. Um, obviously it's lobster. I don't imagine they would give you a humongous lobster tail. It's kind of actually a smaller one. It was like a nice sized portion. I wasn't left wanting more. It just wasn't humongous. Very rich anyway, with that cheesy sauce and everything. So I would order it again. The food seems to be pretty good. The service is that incredible service, that Malay Singapore service. That's just really friendly, really, really like just smiley. Just makes you kind of smile back at them because they're so nice. I guess what I'm trying to say is that the service sparks joy. And another strong point, just from looking at the menu, I think drinks would be a really strong point here. They do like cocktails on the plane. They've got tons of wine. If you like to drink, this is the airline for you. All right, dessert time. We've got a pistachio and almond bavarois. Bavar bavarois. That's what I'm going to go with. With a sour cherry compote. That's not what I expected, but it's good. I was expecting it to be like mousse on mousse, but it's like the top half is this. It's almost like a cheesecake topping. And then underneath is like a... The bottom of it's kind of like the bottom of a cheesecake. It's kind of like a cheesecake, but it's almond. Yeah, it's like an almond cake with a pistachio, moussey, cheesecakey topping. Way better than I thought it was going to taste. I like that a lot. One final thing, the tea took like five minutes after the dessert, but it's like the first time I've ever had it where it's not a billion degrees. I was able to just straight away drink it. I like that. I mean, some people might be annoyed that their tea's not hot, but I like a drinkable temperature tea. So in my eyes, that's a win. I'm impressed. The, the service is really, really good. This has got to be collectively our favorite movie, right? Up in the Air. Please don't subscribe to this YouTube channel unless you've seen Up in the Air. It's brilliant. 
So the food and the service are definitely world class. But the second really world class point about Singapore Airlines that I just want to mention is the in-flight entertainment system. The user interface is great. They've got a super wide selection of films, four live TV channels, including a sports channel, some podcasts, lots of music, and a bunch of TV shows. Though this is the weakest point of their entertainment system. You see, they do have full seasons of TV shows, but they do lack having the complete box set, the full run of TV shows. So for instance, they have one full season of Succession, but it's season four. <laughs> Maybe I want to start from the start. Maybe I haven't seen Succession. So having just season four isn't the best. But overall, I can't knock them too much here because they do have just a humongous selection of TV shows. So I can pretty much guarantee that you'll find something to watch and you won't get bored here. There is Wi-Fi, but I think it costs money. I don't know, we get a bunch of messages. Let's see about the Wi-Fi. Okay, so the Wi-Fi is not loading, so I guess I'll just leave it. I did do some further investigation into this and they do have Wi-Fi. It does cost money though. It is free if you're a member of their Chris Flyer a loyalty program. All around, I was pretty impressed with the tech side of things here. Now, before we get into the weak point, I'll spoil it a little bit. It's the seats. Let's just do a quick investigation of the toilet. It was actually a pretty interesting toilet. All right, so I'm in the front toilet now. It's actually quite spacious. I don't know if you can tell. A bit of room. You probably couldn't swing, swing a cat in here, but it's a uh, it's good size. Not bad, good size. Nice detail. With what I think are real flowers, or maybe they're just sprayed with perfume. I'm not sure, but it's a nice touch there. Got the toilet. Obviously, tissues and hand paper towels. But strangely, we also have like these are like fabric hand towels. Not sure what they're doing there, and I don't know where you put them. I don't know where you put them if you use them. Yeah, like, do you just throw them in the bin? It seems a bit wrong to do that. They're a nice thing to have, I guess. This is the thing that I really like about this toilet. Are you ready? Usually you gotta, like, push things down into the bin. But here... There's a foot pedal. I absolutely love that. That is, like... <laughs> and the other cool thing, I think, if you remember that Japanese airline plane had it, when I did premium economy with Jal, this one's not quite as big. But we've got a little, a little stool. It's not quite sort of full size, but I guess it's a bit nicer than sitting on the toilet if you've got to do something with your shoes. And finally, I guess, because it's business class, we've got a hand lotion, an eau de toilette, a facial mist, and then a few things, a hand sanitizer. I'll give the facial mist a go. I feel revitalized. Overall, I like it. Quite a nice toilet. It's time we get into the seats. I was flying on the 787-10 Dreamliner today. Singapore Airlines was the launch customer for this variant. This plane features their regional business class seat. This seat is also on some of their A350s and is intended for flights under eight hours. On paper, it sounds pretty good. It's in a one two one configuration. All of the seats have direct aisle access and turn into lie flat beds. The window side seats are in a staggered configuration, i.e. you are either seated close to the aisle or close to the window. I selected one of the closer to the window window seats. These are a little bit more private and it is way easier to look out the window. It did not take me long at all to realize that. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of this seat. And here's why. First things first, there's not a whole lot of storage. You see up here, you've got this little block of storage that closes. It's got like a closing door on it. Also, I didn't really think about this at the time, but why is there a like, credit card reader? This is business class. You shouldn't be paying for anything, right? Like, this is just a bit random for such an ultra premium airline like Singapore Airlines. This isn't a budget airline. This isn't Scoot or AirAsia. And it, it just takes up a bunch of space in that storage spot, your only storage spot too. You got that, and then you also got the pocket bit, that there. And I think that's just about it. So yeah, it's definitely a bit weak in the storage department. And then also it's quite narrow. Just watch my elbow when I try and like use a fork. I've got no space. What they've done is they, they've taken this bit like where 19D is. This like privacy shield that comes out around your head, which is what you kind of want when you're on an aisle seat. And They've just mirrored it here. So it's literally just the same seats that they've copied and pasted all over. Instead of designing these window ones without this aisle, because you don't need the privacy screen. It's definitely not optimized for this plane, I think. Uh, then again, what do I know? I'm not a plane seat designer yet. And I guess also, yeah, just a thing of note, when the tray table comes out, and you, if you're in that like half reclined position, it 
practically hits you in the guts. Also, when you recline, it's one of these seats that drops you down a little bit. You end up at the tray table at your chest level. And so in order to eat, you have to be all the way back. And I just find that position to be very upright. It wasn't the most comfortable thing to sit around in. Let's, um, let's put this bad boy into bed mode. I don't want to be that guy, but just... You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that uh, guy. Yeah, this bed is not great. It's mostly got to do with the footwell. It, like, curves towards the end, and that just makes it super claustrophobic. Like, the walls start to cave in, and your feet just... you got nowhere to move. <laughs> also, it's just not very long. If I'm, like, right up on my tippy toes, my head is touching the top of the uh, seat. Yeah, I'm, on, I'm only six foot. It's still also very narrow. Like, your arms are touching both sides. It's just very restrictive. If you're short, slim, then yeah, this probably is fine for you. So yeah, definitely just not the best um, bed in the world. I, I will be, like, the, the blanket was fine. The blanket's pretty normal, pretty fine. But um, the pillow is, I really like the pillow. It's really, really big, uh, really, really supportive. Yeah, this is probably one of the, actually the best pillows I've had uh, on a plane ever. So, look, I'm not turned off entirely from flying Singapore Airlines. I want to do it again. I want to try some of their other planes, but this seat specifically, I don't think it's it. I got to give credit where credit is due though and say that Singapore Airlines is incredibly consistent with their fleet. They've got an incredibly modern fleet. And if you booked for like a life flight seat, you'll get a life flight seat. This isn't Qatar Airways where you'll get a last minute equipment swap from Q Suites to a 737 with a recliner seat. Subscribe because that might've happened to me recently and that video might be coming soon. So, does Singapore Airlines live up to this aura, this reputation that they, they have? I think the answer is yes, but further investigation is probably necessary. <laughs> the food is really good, the in-flight entertainment's really good, the lounge in Singapore is good if you go to the right one, and the service is incredible. It's very similar to Malaysia Airlines. I mean, they were the same airline up until the early 70s. I talked about that in my one of my Malaysia Airlines videos. I'll link it up, up in the top right. But in order to fully answer the question of do they deserve the reputation that they have, I'm gonna have to come back and try the long haul seat. A quick note about how much this cost. I booked this using Velocity Frequent Flyer Points, the Virgin Australia loyalty program and it was 38,000 points and $207.50 Australian dollars in fees. I hope you all enjoyed that video. Subscribe for more stuff like this. Check out flightformula.com. I've got like written versions of these reviews there, plus some tips and tricks, ideas about collecting points, getting points, using points to fly business class, first class, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.